Hello everybody, this is CJ with Gamers Paradise, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite mechs from the Star League era. Came out in technical readout 2750, the Guillotine. Alright, so the Guillotine. Um, Fluff-wise, this mech is an oldie. Uh, it came out originally in 2499 as the frontline mech for the Terran Hegemony, and um, was later rolled into the Star League Defense Force. Um, a heavy, reliable design. It found use all the way through the Star League era, all the way into the Succession Wars, actually. Um, due to the fact that it didn't have a lot that it needed to worry about as far as uh, um, weapons and, and equipment that was high-tech. Um, it was produced by... Let's see. Uh, originally, do, 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 I want to say it was um, oh, New Heart Industries for the Star League Defense Force. Under contract also to Irene Battle Mechs and Lycombe Davian Introtech. So this actually saw service in th in the in the House Cameron plus also House Davian and House Merrick. Um, the design itself it's uh, it's pretty pretty reliable rugged design. Um, came out in twenty four ninety nine as the GLT three N heavy mech weighing in at seventy tons. Um, has a endo steel chassis, standard armor, standard engine. Uh, 25 heat sinks and uh, has a top speed of 64.8 kilometers per hour and uh, four jump jets. So the weapon load on this was a standard large laser, an SRM-6, and four medium lasers. Uh, battle value of 1418. Not the most nimble or most most complex design out there, but it's almost like you know how you have like all the the high tech weapons out there, and then you have that old reliable type weapon that, that this. It's almost AK-47-ish in the capabilities and the, the reliability of it, where no matter what happens to it, you know it'll work. Um, oh, and I think I did mention the whopping 25 single heat sinks. So, yeah, it's an old design, but it was a reliable design. Um, the mech stopped production in the hegemony during the Amorous Civil War, because the 12th Republican Guard decided it'd be a cool idea to celebrate by destroying New Heart Industries' um, factory that built it. You know, let's celebrate by destroying uh, valuable war goods that we could use to fight off the Star League Defense Force, you know? Cool idea, right? Anyway, overall, the, the capabilities of this mech, um, very good. Um, Excels in city fighting, in in urban and jungle terrain, rocky fight, rocky mountainous terrain because of its its jump jets. Um, doesn't have a super powerful knockout weapon, the large laser, but it is a reliable and and decent fallback, you know, to something like a PPC or something like that. Um, so later models of the guillotine. Um, first of all, this did not get a Royal upgrade, uh, which is kind of rare, because just about everything in, in the Star League had a Royal version to, uh, to be used by the Royal Regiments. And this one didn't get that, um, probably because it is the old workhorse of the hegemony. It's, it's so old and so common that you probably didn't want to, like, have this thing floating around in, in the, the newfangled Royal units, you know, the guys with all the good toys. They, they probably looked at it with a little bit of disdain. Um, Fluff-wise, of course, supposedly had some problems with the weapon systems, but you would figure after being in service or service for almost 300 years, they would have worked out any bugs. So, getting into the variants. Uh, first, you had the 4L guillotine, um, which was a downgrade of the 3N. Came out in 2825. It... Basically replaced the endo steel structure with a standard structure. Took out the case because it did have case for the SRM ammo, um, and uh, do, do, do three heat sinks. Otherwise, it was the same mech. So yeah, it's during I mean that, that that's how that's how decent the design was. I mean you could take out some of the high tech stuff and it still worked just fine. Um, had a battle value of fourteen hundred, so it's only like eighteen BV below the. Uh, the, the Star League era version. Um, it's going to have the same capabilities, same reliability. Uh, the, obviously, without case, it's a little bit more vulnerable to getting blown up by ammo explosions, but 
I don't think that's a massive downside. Well, it's a downside, but I don't think it's as bad as it seems because, you know, it's it's a rugged design. It's, you know, it's like an old Chevy. It's just going to keep running. Um, there were some variants of the 4L, the 4P, uh, first introduced in 2833. Um, basically, they removed the large laser, replaced it with a PPC, giving it more of a knockdown punch. Um, and it took off two tons of armor. So you replace you're you're trading reliability for knockdown capability um that's 16 no it's it's 32 armor yeah that's 32 points of armor that come off that mech so that's uh, it's like taking three ppcs before you ever get in the fight i don't think it's worth the trade off um then you have the 5m the 5m is a full redesign uh that came out in 3049 um Okay, so it's called a redesign, but essentially it's the 3N, and the primary weapon is a ER large laser instead of a standard. Otherwise, it has the same armor, the same speed profile, and everything else. Uh, battle value on that is 1472, and I don't think it has double heat sinks, but I don't think you need them with 24 heat sinks. Yeah, you should be good. Uh, then... The next variant to come out was almost 12, it was 13 years later. Uh, that would be the 8D for House Davian. Um, the 8D variant is basically an upgrade of the 5M. Every laser on this sucker is an ER model. Uh, the SRM-6 has uh, been swapped out for a Streak SRM-6. And it has a second ER large laser added. Um, the heat sinks are upgraded to double heat sinks. And um, also it has a targeting computer. So this thing is like the highest, well, at the time, the highest end version of the 4N that would ever exist. Um, after that, you had the Word of Blake produce a couple variants of the mech. Well, one, two, three, three variants of the mech. I apologize. The 6WB. Um... It has, it's similar to the 8D, it has a small cockpit, ferrofibrous armor, uh, so it could also have a C3, improved C3 computer, um, and the large laser has been swapped out with a heavy PPC, and the missile launcher has been swapped for an LRM-15 with one ton of ammunition. Um, it has 11 double heat sinks, and uh, four ER medium lasers, and a compact gyro. So, yeah, this is a zombie. And I would not want to fight against it, especially with that heavy PPC. You can do 15 damage a turn. It punches like a clan mech. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. Um, then you had the 6WB2, which was an upgrade of that. Came out in 3070. Um, endo steel chassis, compact gyro. Uh, mounts two yard medium lasers and has a light Gauss rifle and two light PPCs. With Artemis IV assisted LRM-5, um, has six improved jump jets, so it can jump further than the normal uh, guillotine, um, and it has a jump capacity of 180 meters, and it still has a C3I, has a battle value of 1635, and then you have the 6WB3, the third variant the Word of Blake put out for this thing. Um, this one. Oh, actually, no, there wasn't even a Word of Blake variant. It's a post-Jihad variant. Um, so this came out after the Word of Blake was defeated, and everybody kind of had their hands on a bunch of WBs and WB2s. Um, it came out in 3080, removed the improve, improved C3 for Guardian ECM and normal C3. Um, so, yeah, it's not a bad design. So it's based off the WB, not the WB2. But, I mean, you could easily see, like, a WB-3 with, uh, you know, having changed out from a WB-2 as well. Um, as far as other variants, the clans did build a guillotine 2C, which we'll go into when we get to it. Um, but pretty much imagine the guillotine with all the nice toys from the clans and all the deadly capabilities that come with it. So, that's it for the guillotine today. I really do hope you all enjoyed this, and thank you to Sarna.net for having all this information available online. If you want to go ahead and find out more, go, go to Sarna.net, and you can find out anything you want about Battletech. Um, that's it for tonight. Y'all have a great day, great evening, great whatever it is where you are, and I will talk to you later.